So you want to learn how to make 3D games from GDevelop. Well in this video I'm going to show you how. Let's get right into it. So let's get started by creating a project first. So we're going to go into build and then we're going to go to create a project. And you can name this anything you want. I'm just going to name this 3D, 3D test project. And of course I'm going to store this on my computer. You can choose wherever you want to save this. And I'm going to deactivate this and optimize for pixel art because the sprites that we're going to be using to turn into 3D objects, they will be pixels. So we want to optimize them for pixel art and then put create project. So now we're left with this blank field. But before we even get started making one single bit of this game, let's go into our browser, open up your favorite browser, and we want to start by downloading some sprites. So these are the two sprites we're going to be using. We're going to use a bullet and we're going to use a target dummy. These are the only two sprites we need for this tutorial. So once you go download these, put them, save them somewhere where you can remember in your folder, and we'll be using them later. And as well, before we start, you want to download the 3 3D GDevelop extension by Pandaco. It's a very good extension. You should really go and support him. He has examples for 3D if you want to learn even more about it. But for now, we're going to download the free extension. And you can get it in this page here. All you have to do is click download now no thanks take me to downloads and then download the zip file and extract it in your folders and that should be pretty simple I already downloaded it so I won't be doing it here but that's all you need to do now once you're done downloading all what you need to download we're gonna go back into our project and then we're gonna start creating objects now creating 3d games in GDevelop is not like creating regular 3d games because remember this is still at the end of the day at the end of the day a 2d engine so the first thing we want to do is create a top down uh, create a top down room and we're going to be converting that top down room to a 3d room so I'm going to show you how if you don't understand so first thing we're going to do is put add object add a new object and then put tile sprite and we're just going to name this ground we're going to start with the ground and I've, I don't have a file on my computer for this so we're going to quickly create this with Piscal and the reason why you want to follow along so it can just look pretty good I have two colors already ready this is color white and of course gray and we're gonna just start by painting the whole thing white and then I'm just gonna put some gray edges around it of course you can use any ground sprite you want but me I'm just using this um, ground sprite here because um, it's very simple and of course like I said you can just use any sprite you want so I'm gonna quickly make this So now as you can see here, I'm done making the ground sprite. We're going to hit save and we're going to leave it at the default height and width, which is 32 by 32. And just to make sure I'm going to go in the resize and yeah, and make sure 32 by 32 pixels or else it will not look right. So we're going to apply that and we're going to also set up our grid while we're at it. Put this icon here, toggle slash edit grid and show grid. By default, the grid is 32 by 32 pixels. So it will automatically look like this. So I'm going to drag my ground here and we're just going to create a 3D ground setting. So we want the ground to cover the entire view. So I'm just going to put it like this and now the ground covers the entire view. Next we're going to create a new object and this is going to be the player sprite. So the player will not be a tile sprite, it will be a regular sprite. But I'm really going to call this the camera sprite so we can better understand it as well. But camera player, basically the same thing in this instance. And I'm just gonna create um, it. I'm gonna. It's still gonna be 32 by 32, and I'm gonna make it blue so it can stand out from the ground. Gonna make it blue. This looks like a good blue. Whoops. I could put this back at blue again. This looks like a. Well, let's just go for this dark blue, almost purplish blue. So I'm gonna paint the whole thing now right here, and I'm going to just put a line on it, just so um we can better be able to see it in the scene just so it can look a little bit better you know it's just a regular cube so I'm gonna just put a little sloppy line you know just a sloppy little thing I mean don't mind this too much it's just some bad pixel art but it's, it's all good so I'm creating this almost look like some type of flag but I'm gonna save this and this will be the camera slash players it could be any sprites you want but this will actually not be seen in the gameplay because it's a first person type game so I'm going to drag the player onto the scene and just leave him here for now. And one of the last objects we want to create for now is the wall sprites. Now, the wall will also be a tile sprite. And we want to make the walls look different from the ground so it can 
be, I mean, it can look okay. So wall, and we're going to create with Piscal, 32 by 32x. And of course, this can be any sprite you want, once again. I'm going to choose the yellow color for this wall. And I'm going to paint the whole thing and do the same thing, use the same gray, and just make a simple sprite. So I'm going to create the walls right here. And just like that, we've made a wall sprite. So I'm going to save this once again. And we're going to leave it for here. Now, if I put preview, as you can see, we've just made a simple little top-down scene that's not 3D at the moment. This is not 3D at all. But I'm going to explain to you this later. The first thing we need to do is create some top-down movement. Now, this movement has to be catered toward 3D. So first, we're going to create um, a new event in the event scene, one well, the events window. And we're going to put, we're going to go down the keyboard. Now, we're going to start with forward and backwards movement in 3D. So we're going to put if key pressed, if the W key is pressed, which this will be used for forward. If the W key is pressed, we're going to add a force to the player. So I'm going to put add a force, and we're going to add it at an angle, which means depending on what angle the player is at, in this case the camera. So to do this, we're going to put camera dot angle and leave it at that. We're going to put two parentheses here. That signifies that that's a function. Camera dot angle and speed. We're just going to put 100 pixels per second and make it an instant force, not a permanent force. So now we're going to preview, and if you press W, as you can see, it moves up. And we're going to do the same thing for down. So I'm going to copy and paste this, change this to S, and then I'm going to put something a little bit different here. So an angle, of course, is all the way 360. So if we want to turn around, we need to add 180, 180 degrees to this. So camera.angle plus 180 will leave us with this. If I press S, it goes backwards, and if I press W, it goes forward. Now, the next thing we want to do is make some rotation movement for the um, camera slash the player. So we're going to put if, we're going to use go back down the keyboard, if the A key is pressed, well, let's start with D since that's right. If D is pressed, we're going to rotate the player. Rotate and rotate at angle, and the ang uh, angle that it will rotate at is, let's say, negative 100, maybe that would be good, well not negative 100, just 100, and let's see how this looks in the view, yep, it rotates, and see if I press D, and of course we're going to copy and paste, oops, maybe I can disable it, you can undisable by pressing D, I'm going to copy and paste this as well, and put if A is pressed, we're going to rotate in the opposite direction, which means all we have to do is put negative 100. And just to test this one more time, now we can rotate this way. And I can see we move based on where our angle is. So we don't always just move forward, we move based on where our angle is. So now we have some pretty decent movement. Now I know what you're thinking, this is not 3D at all. And I'm going to make the 3D real quick. Now the extension that we just downloaded, how do we access this extension? So first we want to click this icon here, the project manager, and now we want to go to our extensions. Now this is not an extension you can search yet, it's not been implemented in this field, but we're going to put import extension, which means we can get it from our files. So import extension, and here it is right here. This is where my extension is. Wait, not quite, not quite. Tutorial stuff. And I'm just going to where my um where my extension is, this is wherever you save it, it won't just automatically be here. So I'm importing my extension and now it's imported and the extension itself is called with3js, that's how you know you have it correctly. Now we have the extension in our game. Now how do we actually make this look like 3D? Now this is where the magic happens. We're going to click camera aka the player, go to behaviors and add a behavior. Then we're going to go to linked 3D camera and we're going to put the projection scale as 1. Now the projection scale is not too much to worry about. This can be any object you want, but just make sure in the future every time you see projection scale for any other object, whatever um, the projection scale you set here, set this at the same value for all of your objects. So in this case I'm setting as 1, which means all the other objects will also have a projection scale as 1. If they don't, they'll look very out of whack, they'll look very glitchy. Basically just make them all have the same projection scale. 
and we're going to hide the 2D object, which means we don't want the 2D object displaying itself anymore on screen. And we're going to link the angles. So now the angles are according to the 3D axis as well. And the view, it will stay top down. So apply this. Now we're not going to hit preview yet. We want to do one more thing. Make our ground. We're going to project it as a 3D plane. So we're going to go down here and put 3D plane projection from tile sprite. Set the projection scale as 1. Hide the 2D object. View is top down. Alpha channel can stay the same, anti-aliasing is can stay the same, and blend mode can also stay the same. Now we're going to hit preview. And now this is clear, pure magic. Oh, you might be thinking, what just happened? Nothing has changed at all. Now there's a reason for this, there's a reason for this. Now, we have to set the Z orders as something a little bit different. The Z orders. Now. The Z order is how high up the thing is. So we're going to set the ground Z order as 0 and the player Z order as 15. So the player will basically be higher than the ground. And it still looks a little bit glitchy. A little bit glitchy. And that's because we haven't did one thing. My apologies, my sincere apologies. We will create a new event. So at the beginning of the scene, here's what we want to do. At the beginning of scene, we have to create a 3D scene because that's why I forgot to do the other time. We need to create a 3D scene before any of this stuff is even shown. So at the beginning of scene, we're going to go to other actions with 3JS and then go to 3D scene, create 3D scene. So the field of view, if you've ever played any 3D game, the field of view is how much your player can see at one time. Low field of view means a player cannot see an, a lot of things at one time and high field of view would mean it can see a lot around it and I like to go for a value around the middle I like a FOV of 90 but this can be anything you want but if you want to follow along with the tutorial as um, exact as possible you want to keep this as a 90 now the background color is what the sky is going to be colored what everything around you is going to be colored of course not objects basically just the background the sky so I'm going to keep this, I'm going to just create a, like a, a gray background color. You can just also set this anything you want, but it's going to be like a light gray. And no background image. We could use this as a sky box, but I'm not going to use a background image here. We do not want fog in our game. So, oh yeah, and by the way, you want to put two quotes to make sure this is the default. We do not want fog, so we're going to leave that empty, put two quotes. Fog start distance, we're going to leave it at the default. It doesn't really matter because there's no fog anyway. One and fog maximum distance also leave it at the default, which is 1000. Now we're going to hit OK. And finally, we should actually have a 3D scene. Yep, as you can see here, we have a 3D game already in GDevelop. You can't do much, but you can walk around. You can walk around. So this is the fundamentals already of 3D in GDevelop. But how do we actually create a functioning game with this? How do we create walls? And that's what we're getting into next, walls in GDevelop. Now, we're going to, first of all, center the player a little bit more. And we're going to put some walls around the place. Now, I'm going to just surround the player with a few walls. Some behind it, some um, in front of it. We're going to create like a box for the player almost. Now, how do we keep the walls actually looking like walls? Now, we're going to go into wall, behaviors, add a behavior, and now we're going to put 3D box projection from tile sprite. This will make it look like a box. Now, the depth, as you see, it says unit pixel. Our, our um, art for the wall is 32 by 32 pixels, which means we set the depth to 32 if we want to look like a box. Then we set the projection scale to 1. Then we set view mode top down. Leave the rest of this by default. We don't need to change anything here. And I'm just showing you how a box would look. If I turn around, now I see a 3D box. And that's really cool. Now you're going to be wondering, how do I make a wall with this? Very easy. So, the first thing I'm going to do is change the depth. So, with the depth, you want to make it, since our unit is 32 by 32 pixels, if you want to make it taller, you make the um, the depth higher if we want to make our object taller. So the value that I have set for this is going to be 352. This is a multiple of 32. 
so it will not look glitchy inside the game and it'll basically be evenly spaced out so we go up in here we preview it and now when we turn around we see this is much taller this is way taller now that has a higher depth now another thing we want to do is make sure the Z order is the same at the players it's almost the same but not quite we're gonna set it as 15 and we're gonna preview again it's gonna look quite the same it's still gonna look the same it's just Z order by a little bit changed so the next thing we're gonna do is actually create a walls around and I'm gonna speed this part up because it's pretty boring all I'm gonna do is just duplicate and place the blocks around okay so we're done placing the walls around now I'm going to preview and we should have walls all around us when we come here and as you can see we have walls all around us and we have successfully created some decent looking walls of course they don't have to look this plain or anything this can be any sprite you want I'm just doing this as for testing purposes so we've made some walls now what do we want to do next we want to make a ceiling as well because most games you're not going to be out in the open unless it's an open world game but if you're making something like a dungeon game you want to know how to make a ceiling so we're going to do that so I'm going to create a new sprite add new object tile sprite and I'm going to call this ceiling and we actually do not need to create a new image for this I'm going to put one of these and this is the same image at the ground because this, I'm almost creating this as like a test room for a lab or something and this can have the same sprite and the behavior that's going to have is also going to be the 3D plane projection from tile sprite set the projection scale as 1 alpha channel is 0 everything else can stay the same and we're also going to do one thing we're going to create a layer now if your layers are not over here you can click open layers panel and it will open the layers panel and we're gonna add a layer and call it ceiling this is where the ceiling is going to be and the ceiling needs to be on its own different layer because in 3d your layer does not need to be visible inside the editor in order to be seen in the game if that makes sense but I'm gonna show you how so I'm gonna create a ceiling and I'm gonna put it in a layer in the ceiling layer so it's over it and I'm gonna put it all right here it's gonna be all over the ground and I'm gonna dis um, I'm not gonna disable it yet and well oops this is on ceiling as well base layer but now the ceiling is all over the the field now when I go into the game this is not gonna look good and there's a reason why this looks completely glitchy the ceiling is on top of us inside the room now how do we make the ceiling go higher this is where Z order comes in while I was talking about earlier that you may have not understood. Z order in G about 3D, the higher the Z order goes, the higher the object goes. And I already have this value set up because of the projects I've made before, but the Z order that I'm using is 180. And look how this looks much better. Once it loads up, it's going to take a little bit. And now we have a successful ceiling that has been covered over almost the lab. So you could set this higher by saying the Z order higher, you could make it lower. But to me, this is just right as a ceiling. So if you ever want to make an object look higher, you can make the Z order higher. So I'm going to disable the ceiling and also show you that um, I'm going to disable the ceiling. Hold on. The ceiling is not on the ceiling layer now the ceiling is disabled so we can actually see our project and edit it and as you can see when I come in here the ceiling can still be shown even though I disable the layer and that's not really normal in GDevelop but for 3D is different now what do we want to do next in this game how do we actually make a little bit of actions how do we make 3D objects in the game that we can interact with well I'm going to show you how we're going to create some dummies that can be shot at so I'm going to add a new object and create a sprite. I'm gonna call this sprite dummy and I'm gonna add an animation and create with Piscal. Now this is where the sprites come in that you got earlier that I told you to download. Please download the sprites if you haven't already 
browse images wherever you save them go to those images so I'm gonna go to downloads I have this in a folder for this tutorial specifically but wherever you save them that's where you go and I'm gonna put test dummy import as a single image smooth resize all of that jizz jazz and import and as you can see we have our test dummy here now I'm gonna center it and we're looking good right now I'm going to save this and apply now I'm gonna add this dummy to the scene and then as you can see it looks really small so we're gonna change that size to 100 by 100 and now we have an 100 by 100 dummy now here's the thing this is not gonna look g good in game this is gonna look very as you can say low budget and cheap inside the game and you see we have the thing just sitting here that's always following us on screen all the time and that's because we have not gave this sprite 3d sprite projection now we're gonna go into the dummy go to behavior add behavior and go to 3d sprite projection set the projection scale of one of course and we're gonna set the alpha channel as I'm gonna keep it as zero just to show you something I know this is gonna look good but I'm gonna keep it as zero just to show you something that you you may run into on your 3d adventures now I'm gonna load this back in and as you can see our dummy is first of all up in the air and second of all it has a lot of black around it and there's a reason why first of all the reason why our dummy is up in the air because his Z order is really high I'm gonna set the um his Z order as maybe a start at like 20 see how it looks but the reason why the dummy has black around it is because the alpha channel is not 0 0.5 and you see recommended values down here are 0 or 0 0.5 because of this reason some sprites have black around them when they're at zero but if they do have black around them if you ever run to this problem with other sprites simply just change the alpha channel test to 0 0.5 and it'll immediately fix it so I'm gonna test this again and let's see how it looks now now the dummy is still kinda clipping through the floor right now and the reason why it's lagging because not full screen it's still clipping through the floor but it definitely looks much better and has no black around it it's actually completely transparent so let's X out and I'm gonna just set the Z order to something like 25 I'm gonna preview this one more time it doesn't have to look perfect but I also don't want it standing in the air and this looks good this looks very good this is just fine now we're gonna place with several of these dummies I'm gonna duplicate them and place them around the map and these dummies are the ones that we're going to shoot at. Now, how do we make these dummies able to be shot at in the first place? Now that we have them looking 3D. Now, the first thing we want to do is go back to our 3D test project, go to extensions, and search for a new extension. We're going to search bullets. Well, actually, it's right here, but if you don't see it, just put bullets. And we're going to install this extension in projects. And this GDevelop extension makes it really easy to shoot bullets or any object you want. Now, what we want to do with this extension is add it to the camera, aka the player, add behavior, and then go down to fire bullets. Max ammo, we can keep this the same. We can set the firing arc to 0 or 45, but I can set it at 0. And we're going to set everything else is basically default, except for the reload. We don't need to reload because we already have unlimited ammo it's not very a very sophisticated gun now another thing we want to do is now that our object is able to shoot bullets with the extension we want to add our bullet inside the game so it can be spawned so we're gonna put sprite we're gonna name this bullet add an animation create with pistol and we're gonna do the same thing we did with the dummy we're going to import our bullets so go to whatever I need to go to and import my bullet import and now we have a clean looking bullet that's going to be in the game and here we are right now so now we want to program the actual shooting so I'm gonna add new event at condition and we're gonna to go to keyboard you can set this to any button you want but I'm gonna set a space if space is pressed player is going to fire a bullet towards an angle this is very important now where do we want the bullet to spawn? Player.x. And basically what this means if we're spawning the bullet at the player's x position, 
and also we're spawning the bullet at the player's Y position. So no matter where the player is, it will always spawn it in the right place. Now, the bullet object is the bullet that we just had, and the angle of the bullet will be player dot angle. So no matter what which way the player is facing, it will always be at an angle where the player is facing. So we won't be shooting bullets behind ourselves. And the speed, I'm just going to give a speed of 800. This will make it go pretty fast. Now, we're going to run into a similar problem we just ran into. When we shoot it, you're going to see this 2D object come across the screen. And this is not good. Now, we're going to do the same thing we did with the dummies. We're going to add behavior. Put 3D sprite projection. View will project to scale 1 and alpha channel test 0 0.5 to make sure there's no black stuff around it. And now we're going to go back again and shoot. After 10 million years, I found out what the problem was. The problem was um, I set this as player instead of camera. The object is actually called camera. I should have named it player for less confusion. But the object is called camera. And it's not player. So basically we're spawning it at nothing. Now this should work perfectly well. And I didn't see if I press space now, it shoots a bullet. Now, I didn't see these bullets do nothing, which is fine for now, I guess. And they you can see they also go through walls. So how do we change that? Now, the first thing I'm actually going to do before we change that is I'm going to set this as trigger one so we can't spam space. Well, so we can't hold space and spam. Now, we want to give these things some collisions. We want to give them some collisions. And we're going to do it like this. We're going to put, if bullet is in collision with a dummy, it deletes the dummy. It deletes the dummy. And it deletes the bullet. We delete the bullet as well with the dummy. So they both disappear because that's how it be. So now if we test this, we shoot a bullet. And it destroys the bullet and the dummy. And now we want to do the same thing for the walls. Now, if bullet is in collision with wall, is in collision with wall, we delete bullet. Simple as that. And now when we shoot at walls or the dummy, we can't move. We can't move it. We can't move at all. Now, this is pretty good. Now, one more thing I didn't tell you about before we leave off for the 3D today. The one more thing I didn't tell you about is that you can actually go through these walls, which is pretty cheap. Unless you're a ghost, you shouldn't be able to go through walls. Now, this has a very simple, simple fix. And we're going to simply do it like this. If camera is in collision with our wall, we're going to separate the two objects. And you'll see how this works. You're going to be like, how does this even work? Separate the two objects. Separate um, and for the object that won't move. The object that won't move is the wall. So now, when we crash into the wall, we crash into it. Boom. We can't move through it. We can no longer face th through things like ghosts. And just like that, we have made 3D and GDevelop. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. These are the foundations of 3D and GDevelop. With this, you can already make a whole bunch of shooter type games. You can include things like dialogue, quests, but this is a foundation foundation of how to get 3D working in GDevelop. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. As well as if you really, really enjoyed this, I'll be making a video soon of how to make a 3D camera that can be controlled by a mouse in GDevelop. So please stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. See ya.